The sunny weather is expected to take a turn tonight. Find out when severe weather will hit Norman. And the turnpike fight continues. Hear what Norman residents are saying today. And the U.S. officials present a plan to slow Russian forces in Ukraine. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Maddie D'Addario. And I'm Tyler DeLuca. We begin with the chance for severe weather tonight. Let's get right over to OU Nightly's Hannah Gard. Hannah? Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, we're just a week out from our last severe threat. We saw some tornadoes in southern Oklahoma, and once again, most of the state included in a slight risk for severe weather for tonight. We could see damaging winds. We could see large hail. We also have that low end tornado threat. So once we get into springtime here again, if this is your house, you're going to want to remember those tornado shelter tips. This is the safest room in the house, the most interior room. If you don't have a basement or a storm shelter, that's where you're going to want to head as far from windows as you can possibly be and what to bring with you bring an air horn batteries closed toed shoes your cell phone make sure to charge that this evening a first aid kit flashlight food and water along with something to cover your head like a helmet and your weather radio to get the up-to-date weather tips that you can but guys later on in the newscast Colton's gonna have more about the fire risk that we see today ahead of that front along with our storm timing for today tonight and who sees what guys back to you. Thanks Hannah. Norman residents are speaking out today about the proposed access Oklahoma Turnpike, which is planned to run through parts of Norman. Oh, you know, Audrey Goodson was at the Oklahoma Turnpike's monthly meeting this morning. She joins us live with their concerns. I'm here on I-35 where the Oklahoma the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority says their plan access Oklahoma will alleviate some traffic. This plan has caused controversy in Norman and today dozens of citizens gathered to make their voices heard. We all have families. How would you feel if a turnpike planned to go through your home without thinking about how many homes it would take along that route? Norman residents like Dr. Amy Serrato voiced their frustrations today at the Oklahoma Transportation Authority's monthly meeting. With foundations and road sightings, I also live directly in the path of the proposed southern route through Norman. I have a simple question for the board. Why these routes? Serrato argues that the proposed plan doesn't make sense from an engineering, economic, or environmental sense. But Oklahoma's Secretary of Transportation says he's open to concerns and routes could be adjusted. We'll do everything that we can to minimize impacts to the environment, to minimize impacts to property owners. While some do not have the fear of losing their own home, they stand for those who might. And they know that the average person doesn't have money to fight something like this. And so it's picking on the everyday person. It's shameful. It's immoral. OTA says they can't estimate how many homes will be destroyed in the expansion, but they are looking for the best solution possible. Reporting from Norman, Audrey Goodson, OU Nightly. Thanks, Audrey. U.S. officials are calling the Kremlin's latest plan a major strategy shift to drastically reduce military forces in two Ukrainian cities. Chris Wynn reports on the key military change and what Russia re expects in return. A significant move on two fronts. Russia pulling back some forces from Kyiv and Cherniv following the latest peace talks with Ukraine in Istanbul, with Turkey hailing the talks as the most meaningful progress yet. More than a month into the invasion, many crediting the underestimated resilience of the Ukrainian people. I do think that um, uh, Ukraine is in a good negotiating position, uh, much better than they would be had they not been able to push the Russians out of Kyiv. Paramount to Russia's change in strategy, an agreement on neutrality. A Ukrainian presidential advisor saying a meeting between Putin and Zelensky is now a likelihood. But the shelling of northern cities continued on Tuesday, even as the de-escalation was announced. Mr. Mayor, what was that? You have just heard an explosion. That means something has flown in to attack us. You can, you can give this recording to your military and they will tell you that this is not our explosion. This isn't us striking something. This is something that has come from the enemy side. 
U.S. officials believe Russian forces are pulling back in some areas of the north to focus on gains in the south and the east. But Secretary of State Antony Blinken cautions that this could be a deception. There is what Russia says and there is what Russia does. We're focused on the latter. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn reporting. An advisor to President Zelensky said Ukrainians will be asked to approve any agreement linking neutrality status with security guarantees, and it is essential that the government has the support from the Ukrainian people. Today, the UK has, de has detained a super yacht with ties to the Russian regime. Brooklyn Suite has that story and the rest of today's headlines from around the world. Thanks, Tyler. Not sailing away anytime soon, the United Kingdom has detained a 192-foot superyacht belonging to an unnamed businessman with ties to Russian President Vladimir Putin and the Russian regime. Under the government's Russian sanctions, this is the first ever detention of a superyacht in English waters. The Department of Transportation claims the ownership of the boat was, quote, deliberately well hidden. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration Administration expands the authorization of a second COVID-19 booster shot to all adults over the age of 50. Previously only allowed for people over the age of 12 with severe immune deficiencies, a second booster shot can now be given four months after the first for both Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. The CDC is not expected to officially recommend a second booster shot, but will allow shots to be given to those who want them. For the first time in nearly six months, Britain's Queen Elizabeth makes her first public appearance to pay homage to her late husband of 73 years. Many gathered at Westminster Abbey for a Thanksgiving service honoring Prince Philip, who passed away last April. Unlike the funeral last year, today the Queen was surrounded by family, friends, British politicians, and royal families from around the world. The nation is looking to happier days ahead as the Queen's Platinum Jubilee approaches in June to celebrate her 70 years of public service to England. And Elton John has extended his farewell tour with 11 performances across the U.S. Maddie and Tyler, the Rocket Man, will wrap up his final time on the road at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. Thanks, Brooklyn. Oil in the U.S. is finally seeing a decrease in prices. Find out how Russia's slowing attacks in Ukraine has helped oil prices in Money Matters. Plus, Chris Rock taking it off the chin from Will Smith at the Oscars has him seeing some financial compensation in ticket sales. Find out how when OU Nightly returns. Hello and welcome back to OU Nightly. U.S. oil prices are decreasing and lawmakers are meeting today to discuss an upcoming financial plan. Mecca Thompson has those stories and more in Money Matters. Thanks, Maddie. U.S. oil prices have decreased today after Russia claims to lessen their attacks in parts of Ukraine. The number sinks below $100, easing the energy supply fears that sent the prices up earlier this month. The Russian official said the changes are part of an effort to increase mutual trust and create the necessary conditions for further negotiation. And today, lawmakers are scheduled to begin discussing President Biden's budget plan for 2023. Some of the highlights include funding for NASA that could potentially put the first woman and person of color on the moon, combating the opioid epidemic, along with crime and prevention and many other additions. The list continues and a House committee is set to begin reviewing his plan at any moment. Ticket sales for comedian Chris Rock's tour have skyrocketed following the incident with him and Will Smith at the Oscars Sunday night. The ticket reseller TickPick says it sold more tickets overnight into today than it did in the past month combined. Prices for the tour were originally $46, but have risen to a minimum of $341. On to a positive note, U.S. stocks started today with gains that recently have been down due to Russia-Ukraine crisis. Maddie, Tyler. Thanks, Mecca. And with spring sports and tornado season both in full swing, the two do not exactly go hand in hand. When we come back, OU Nightly Shannon Earhart looks at how OU sports prepare for under unpredictable weather. Colton, I know there are some games tonight. Should they be worried about any possible inclement weather? Yeah, we're going to break down the timings, maybe what that impact will have, not just on sports, but on the rest of us. All that's coming up here in just a few minutes. Don't go in here. We'll be right back. All 
right, welcome back to OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us. I'm Colton Williams. We've had a busy weather day here at OU Nightly. There's a lot to cover. Let's get right to it. Looking downtown Oklahoma City here. Motorists getting on just fine, but you notice the camera is a bit shaky. The winds are howling out there. We've got temperatures in the middle to upper 70s. It feels absolutely gorgeous out there, but like I said, winds sustaining 25 to 30 miles per hour. They are gusting even more. Here across the metro, gusting anywhere from the upper 20s to the upper 30s. We've even got a couple 40s hanging around in Fort Cobb, and it's only worse as you go out west. We've got the dry line setting up here. Check out Guymon sitting a wind gust just a few minutes ago of 54 miles per hour. So winds gusting anywhere from 25 to 35 to even as close to 55 and 60 miles per hour across the day today. So this has prompted several warnings. There's a wind advisory anywhere in this region. If you go out west, that's a high wind warning. That's uh, the in the yellow numbers are the max wind gusts recorded today. You see they've recorded one over 60 miles per hour in Guymon today. So this is going to continue as we go throughout the afternoon and evening hours ahead of our thunderstorms. So again, the big story today, there's a dry line set up in western Oklahoma. You can see it, right? Relative humidity is 40 to 50 percent ahead of it in the teens behind it. That's causing several problems, including a big time fire risk here. So there's a red flag warning for most of these counties now in pink here. Even a couple evacuations going on in Roger Mills and Ellis counties because of a dangerous fire. So all right, looking up top here, here's what's going on. We've got our next storm system hanging out right here nearing the Four Corners region. The jet stream is digging in here, bringing in some sweet Gulf moisture to central Oklahoma, and that is what is providing the chance for our severe thunderstorms as we go throughout the afternoon and evening ahead of this dry line here. So here's what our storm setup looks like. Like I said, we've got lots of moisture. The moisture is a little better to the south and the south Southeast. That's where we're expecting the highest impacts, but they're going to initiate along this dry line here and right up the wave of this jet stream here into central Oklahoma as we go throughout the next several hours. So the severe weather outlook, this extends from Sioux Falls, North Dakota, all the way down nearly to Odessa, Texas. So there is a large scale, big time tornado, or excuse me, not tornado, severe weather risk throughout the U.S. today. And that does include lots of Oklahoma here, really extending really from Enid to Oklahoma City, Lawton and eastward. Really, several folks in Oklahoma City are under this slight risk for severe weather. So the tornado zone tonight, the chance is low, but it's not zero. Anywhere along this line of thunderstorms could produce a tornado here anywhere inside. Really, the brown region is where the chance is going to be highest. Again, we're not looking at a big time tornado risk, but it is there. The hail zone could have hail up to golf ball size anywhere inside this uh, yellow zone. That does include a lot of Interstate 35 and a lot of Interstate 44 as well. Damaging winds are going to be the biggest threat because as this thing lines out and moves eastward, it's going to really try to bow out here, and that is what is going to uh, create a damaging wind risk. So again, tornado threat is low, not zero. Hail is a little bit higher. It will be isolated, and we do have a higher end wind risk as we go throughout the evening this evening. So I'll show you what this times out like you see around the 9 p.m. hour. We have storms initiating in southwestern Oklahoma and moving eastward and northeastward. These could get messy here as they approach the Oklahoma City Metro. Still going to have a couple isolated supercells. That's what we really need to watch as we go throughout the afternoon and evening hours. Then they're going to line out, move off to the east, and again, they're going to get pretty messy. So primarily an overnight event here for central Oklahoma as it will become more of an overnight event as you go off to the east. So we've got showers tomorrow, hanging around tomorrow morning. Before Thursday, we get back warmer and then we're going to be returning to seasonal as we go throughout the next several days. Thanks, Colton. The threat of severe weather is something Oklahomans experience every spring, and that means spring sports have to make adjustments. OU Nightly's Shannon and Earhart is live with what this means for OU Athletics. Shannon? Spring in Oklahoma brings the threat of severe storms, which every OU sport has to consider throughout the year. What to expect? It's, it's an unknown. We don't know what to expect in the best way. Spring sports like OU tennis are in full swing, but it's only the beginning of the spring storm season. National Weather Center reporter Ryan Bunker told me that every spring sport should be cautious because a small thunderstorm can turn into a severe one. Sports with a bat or any type of metal easily conduct lightning. So in the bulk of baseball and softball season, Bunker says teams should expect postponements and rain delays. Unlike field sports, tennis has a luxury that many other sports do not have. We have a beautiful indoor facility and we have 12 outdoor courts and six indoor courts. So it's, it's the best of both worlds. Track and field also plays both sides and has the option to switch to their indoor facility if conditions are too dangerous. So far, each team has managed to dodge the extreme weather, but the possibility of storms continue into the spring. Reporting live from Headington Family Tennis Center, Shannon Earhart, OU Nightly. 
Thanks, Shannon. Well, I bet Patty Gasso and her team are hoping that the weather does not impact them too much. Yeah, the weather seems to be the biggest threat to OU softball these days. Brig Bates has what's ahead for them and the rest of Sooner Sports next. Yeah, guys, the weather might shock the stadium ahead of tonight's game as the Sooners host the Wichita State Shockers. And yet another Sooner team might be rained out as OU baseball heads to, to Tulsa tonight for a Bedlam matchup. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Brig Bates, and it's time for sports. The number one team in the nation, OU softball, remains on fire after starting conference play pass this weekend. Patty Gasso and the ladies host Wichita State tonight in Norman for a shocking midweek matchup. Sooners look to take down the Shockers to improve to 30-0 on the season tonight at 6. It was just a good team win. I think Hope carried us in the circle. She was just unreal. Um, it was a good battle against Baylor. They brought it today. Their pitcher brought it. So just our team, we just continued to fight throughout each inning. Um, so it was just really cool to see. And that walk up just was just nice, seeing them at home plate, bringing it home. So it was a good team win for sure. Bad blood is brewing in Tulsa tonight as the Bedlam series is renewed, but this time in a non-conference matchup. The Oklahoma Sooners will meet the Oklahoma State Cowboys on the mound tonight at the 1-0-K field. This is the first of four meetings between OU and OSU over the next two weeks. The Sooners are coming off a series win over Baylor at home and look to stay hot. First pitch is at 7. Last night, the OKC Thunder and the Portland Trailblazers matched up for a tankathon. Both teams combined for 19 players on the injury report. Although the two teams were full of G League players, the game didn't disappoint. The Thunder trailed by double digits in the fourth, but with the help of Isaiah Roby knocking down a last second shot, the Thunder sent the game to OT. Roby didn't stop there, dropping a career high 30 points for the Thunder win 134 to 131. Moving on to women's ball, the number two seed UConn Huskies took on the number one seed NC State Wolfpack in an instant classic last night. These two teams battled all night as the game entered double overtime, but Connecticut snuck out the win 91 to 87. This will be the Huskies' 14th consecutive trip to the NCAA semifinals. It's one of the best games I've ever been a part of um, since I've been at UConn. Uh, regular season, postseason, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it was just amazing the way, you know, the 10 kids that are on the court are playing for their lives, you know. Nobody wants to lose. The number one seed Louisville held off a gritty three seed Michigan 62 to 50 in a defensive showdown. The Lady Cardinals held the Wolverines scoreless for the last five minutes of the game to punch their ticket to the final four. Louisville will face number one seed South Carolina on Friday for a trip to the Natty. This morning, Twitter blew up as speculations of a 15-time major champion Tiger Woods was headed to Augusta, Georgia ahead of the Masters Tournament. Although there has been no confirmation of Tiger coming back, golf fans were pleased to hear the information and tracked his jet all morning. Woods is just 13 months from a near-fatal car accident, which left him contemplating retirement from golf. And NFL owners approved a modified proposal for overtime situations ahead of the 2022 NFL season. The new overtime system will give both teams an opportunity to score in the playoffs, but normal OT regulations will remain the same in the regular season. Yeah, guys, a majority of complaints for a new OT rule came after the Chiefs Bill game. Thanks, Brig. As people try and find ways to raise money for Ukraine, one artist got creative with the help from a friend. Find out how a robot dog is helping Ukrainian relief next on OU Nightly. I'm Emily Faith at the OU Nightly Update Desk. This afternoon, United States President Joe Biden signed a new hate crime bill into law. The law makes lynching a federal hate crime in the U.S., giving civil rights advocates a long-awaited win. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Emily. It's pretty common you hear of a dog doing work for charity, but it's not every day you hear about a robo-dog raising $40,000 from his artwork. Meet Spot, the robot that created paintings from scratch to benefit Ukraine. The robot was used by artist Agnieszka Pilat, and the overall event raised over $250,000 for Ukraine. And Colton, I know we need to prepare for some severe weather tonight. 
Yeah, that's right. So storms are going to initiate in western Oklahoma ahead of the dry line. This is really primarily going to be an overnight event, really a midnight time event for the Oklahoma City Metro, and then an overnight event for eastern Oklahoma. So make sure you keep that in mind as we go throughout the evening this evening. Got several rain chances coming up. Maddie and Tyler Spring is here. Back to y'all. Thanks for watching OU Nightly brought to you by the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. Be sure to join us live weekdays at 430 and again later at 930. Good night.